made possible through support from PASCO, Personal Assistance Services of Colorado, the Arc of Aurora, and Developmental Pathways. A Think Change Training. Hey, I'm Hani Rayley here with the Arc of Aurora and Think Change, providing you a Think Change series on what happens when you find yourself in the criminal justice system. Hopefully you're tuning in just because you want to learn a little bit more about it, but perhaps you found yourself right in the middle of it. Um, I'm hoping today that I can help demystify it a little bit for you. It's one of those systems that's not super friendly to the people that are involved in it. Um, but I want to give you a bit more details today so that you feel a bit more comfortable as you move through it. What you should know is that there's three, for the most part, three different um, sort of cases that you'll see in the criminal justice system. Um, there's the civil cases. These are more, you know, easily defined as someone bringing a, um, a lawsuit against another person. So they're usually trying to find a remedy to issues that they've seen out in the community or their life. So it's someone that's maybe suing another person is considered a civil case. There's also family cases and in family courts, um, usually they're dealing with issues of alimony, divorce, child custody issues. It's a separate, separate um, court because you know, we know that those family issues probably need a little bit more um, finesse and a little bit more ease to get through them because they're so difficult and challenging for the folks that are there. Um, you'll also see criminal cases. And criminal cases are when someone's charged with an offense, when someone's broken the law, um, and they are then tried by the district attorney, um, who is a government official. So you'll see these cases um, tried in two levels of courts. One is the municipal court and the other is the district level courts. Um, municipal courts are sometimes known as the city courts. They try lesser charges for the most part. Um, they try um, charges that happen in the city limits of that municipality or that city. Um, they also deal with those civil and the small claims court issues. Um, while most state matters, most like state charges are tried in district courts. Um, municipal courts, like I said, take on kind of less serious crimes. Um, there are folks that don't always, that don't stand to see any jail time or if there's restitution or anything like that, it's usually under a thousand dollars. But if it's a more serious case, you're gonna find those ones tried in district level courts. Most felony crimes are tried in district level courts. Um, they will hear um, probate issues, um, sometimes divorce cases, but like I said, those are usually found in more family court settings. Um, they involve um, federal agencies and um, really, like I said, if you're at the district level, it's more serious or it happened outside of a municipality that serves um, through a municipal court. Um, there's a couple different ways that you enter the criminal justice system. Um, one is becoming is a victim of a crime. Um, if you are a victim of a crime, you do have access to a victim witness um, advocate. Um, these folks are folks that you do have to seek out. They're not always readily available to you. Um, but those victim advocates are people that can really help you through the process of the courts, um, that can help you um, better identify what your options are, um, and just to be your support. Um, you could also be there because you're a witness to a crime or an offense. In that situation, you don't have access to a victim advocate, um, but you might be called through a subpoena to attend um, a case of someone else that you might have been involved with um, or an instance you were involved with out in the community. You also could be a defendant or a plaintiff. Um, in, especially you know, if you're in the civil or small claims court, um, but also the criminal courts. If you have um, or are being accused of um, committing a crime, um, that's another way that you'll enter the criminal justice system. And that's another instance where you don't have access to a victim um, advocate um, just by process of the way that those are administered to people. Um, so those are three, the majority of the three reasons you would find yourself in the criminal justice system. Um, when you are being charged with a crime, you do have access for the most part to a public defender. 
Um, you have to meet some criteria to reach that public defender. It has to be a serious enough crime. You also have to meet some financial eligibility um, to have access to that public defender. Tune into Jeff and Petrie's series on representation in the criminal justice system. That'll help you get a better idea of what you have access to. Um, but know that you have a right to representation. Um, just some of it is um, free or low cost and others you do have to seek out on your own and it's a private um, charge that you'll make. Um, there's some potential outcomes that you might see from being in the criminal justice system. Um, there's always the guilty and not guilty, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but there's also these, you know, lesser. There's restitution where you actually pay for um, that crime if you're, you know, found guilty of it. Um, you can plea down your charges. So perhaps, you know, initially when you find yourself in the set situation, um, they're suggesting a certain level of time that you might see in jail or level of fee that you would have to pay, but sometimes you can plea that down to something lesser. Um, sometimes cases just get dismissed. Sometimes that's because there's not enough evidence or the people that have brought the case don't show up in court. Um, there's also something called drug court, and that's not found in every uh, municipal setting, um, but drug court is considered a form of restorative justice um, type of uh, treatment. So that's really where you are, um, you are committed then to seeing a judge regularly, often monthly. You're given a separate set of um, expectations that you need to follow throughout that month. Sometimes you're providing community service, sometimes you're seeing drug and alcohol therapists, sometimes you're going to get a job because that's a big barrier or will, could be a big barrier to um, reoffending. Um, those are all set out pretty specifically. You'll know what your expectations are, but that's another form of that restorative justice to being able to um, really, you know, make a difference in your life and n perhaps not be in the criminal justice system again. Um, and there's also probation and parole. Jeff and Petrie in another series, stay tuned to it, will talk a little bit more about the differences between probation and parole. Um, both similar to kind of that drug court concept I just talked about, have a set of guidelines that you have to follow. Um, again, the whole, the, the reason that the courts have set up these paths is to, you know, hopefully keep you out of the criminal justice system again in the future. Um, which brings me to the point that, you know, there's ways that you can actually avoid being in the criminal justice system in the first place. That, of course, is the more positive scenario. Um, a lot of it is knowing yourself and knowing what you need in the community. Um, if there's instances where you find that perhaps you become anxious in certain settings or that maybe you or your loved one's behavior might seem to an onlooker as scary or threatening, when you might know that that's not really the case, but you wanna make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. Um, build in those accommodations that you need in the community to keep yourself out of the criminal justice system in the first place. Um, that means too, knowing how to interact with law enforcement officers. Um, you know, they are police officers, they're trained and their duty is to keep the community safe. And even if you feel like you're being safe, if they've made the judgment that you're not perhaps safe for yourself or others, um, their job is to intervene and to, um, to, to handle the situation. So, you know, when you're faced with a situation with a police officer, follow directions is my best advice. If they're asking to come talk to them or to perhaps put your hands up in the air, do that. That's in your, in your best interest, to be honest with you. Police officers are really, um, because they're so highly trained, they get a little nervous when you start um, or s never follow their instructions or if you start putting your hands in your pockets or turn your back on them. So even if you feel like there's not a problem or you're not in the wrong, it's important for you to follow police officers' expectations because as much as they're trained to keep the community safe, they're reasonable individuals. They'll talk with you, but they need to know that you're willing to talk with them in a safe way. Um, also, if you're a family member that knows that an individual in your house um, might need police intervention, both because they're not safe or they're maybe um, unsafe to the other people in their house, you can always call in advance. You can call the, um, the, uh, the dispatch and let them know, hey, I have an individual in my house. They have this disability. Sometimes um, they may act aggressively and we may need police intervention. 
They'll probably ask for a description about the person, uh, their age, their disability, what they can do to handle the situation that's gonna be you know, most positive as far as the outcome goes. You can always make those calls in advance so that when you have police officers responding to your home, they don't come in assuming that um, all, you know, the full force needs to um, take place. Sometimes people just need another authority figure to come into the house to help de-escalate the situation. Um, so think about things in advance too so that you can avoid the criminal justice system and avoid conflict and altercations with law enforcement officers. Um, if you need help with any of this, with being um, a victim or finding yourself as a defendant, call the Arc of Aurora, call your local advocacy organization, call the courts. People want you to succeed. They don't want to see you back in the criminal justice system, but it's up to you to make that phone call and to really start working on how to keep yourself out of that situation or to navigate the situation as you might have found yourself in it. Um, everyone out there wants to help. Thank you so much for staying tuned to me and tune in to Jeff and Petrie so that they can dive a little bit further into some of these topics.